At this time, it's my pleasure to introduce our plenary speaker. For over 25 years, Nadine Cruz has been a practitioner, leader, an advocate, and author on the need of pedagogies of engagement in higher education. Her early volunteer experiences with peasants in, in the Philippines inspired a commitment to integrate teaching and community partnership across diverse worlds of engagement for social change. Nadine is the former director of the Haas Center for Public Service at Stanford University, where she founded and director, directed the Public Service Scholars Program. As past executive director of the Higher Education Consortium for Urban Affairs, Nadine led 18 colleges and universities to develop community-based learning programs in the US and abroad. Among her publications, Nadine is co-author of Service Learning, a movement's pioneers reflect on its origins, practice, and future as well as Where's the Community and Service Learning Research. Recognition for Nadine's work includes the National Youth uh, Leadership Council's Alec Dixon Servant Leading Award in 2005, the Richard E. Cohn Award for Excellence in Leadership for Campus Community Partnerships in 2003, and an honorary doctorate Humanis Causa by Carleton College in 2008. Now an independent co consultant, Nadine works nationwide with colleges and universities and, nation and uh, national and state campus compact organizations as well as the UL system. We're honored to have her here today. Please join me in welcoming Nadine Cruz. Maraming salamat. I just said thank you very much. Uh, that was a very warm welcome, and I'm very pleased to travel all the way from home in the Bay Area in California to be here to share with you reflections on several decades of practice. And I hope the benefit for you in my sharing with you reflections on the practice of several decades is that you will not repeat the same mistakes I made, you will make your own. <laughs> because this is very much an experimental pedagogy and very much a practitioner's um, way of going about things. It's primarily people who are willing to do and experiment and fail and be involved with something that has so many variables, it's really a matter of managing and controlling as well as creating at the same time. There's a lot that I want to share with you, and I would like to begin by um, admitting to my mistakes. And beginning from there, um, offer to you a mental map of how I reflect on what this is about, and then perhaps um, by so doing, help you to be more fully aware of how challenging this work is, how important it is, and how much you have already done. And then to look back on the five years, four years past, and see where we stand today move going forward. So for those of you who tend to like ideas, you'll be happy with the first part. And those of you who like to know what are we going to do next Monday morning, I hope that I have some things to offer you as well. I know that we are in that spectrum from one end to the other. So let me begin first by sharing with you a little bit of how it's like to be an immigrant to this country and not know all the stuff that you assume you might know if you are reasonably educated. So when my young son, when, when my son was very young, he's 22 now, I used to take him to little league practice and I felt really proud that I was doing the American thing and um, would take him very devoted to making sure he was right there in practice every single time. And one day we were driving to practice, and he said, Mom, where's my ball? And this is the ball that I noticed, that every time he went to practice, he would bring this particular ball, and that he would be very possessive about it. 
and any time it got out of sight, he would be very anxious, and he seemed particularly, I don't know, uh, keen and aggressive about this particular ball. So I said, well, it's by your feet. Uh, and it was at the tip of my tongue to say you should be taking care of your own stuff, but I didn't say anything. So he picked it up, and he was looking at it, and he screamed such a bloody, blood-curdling scream. I got scared. Mom! I said, David, what's wrong? Mom, you ruined it. I said, David, I was just trying to be helpful. You, you looked like you were really anxious about this ball, so I wrote your name on it. Mom, but Nolan Ryan wrote his name on it. <laughs> and I said, who's Nolan Ryan? <laughs> he was so wounded, he has, still hasn't forgiven me. <laughs> so. Some of you might not actually know what I had done. So if you don't, please ask your neighbor next to you to explain. Um, but I found out that this is a practice for people who are really devoted to baseball fans. He particularly admired Nolan Ryan, who apparently is one of the best baseball pitchers ever from Texas, and that um, he felt he was I don't know, channeling the spirit of Nolan Ryan when he brought this ball. And, but I didn't realize that by, by writing his name on it, which I thought was taking care of him and his property, that I had really truly ruined what was valuable about this ball in all kinds of ways. So I tell this story because it is in many ways our relationship to community partners and communities that we want to serve. And I hope this story is not so, such a down story. When you think about that the heart is not enough, to care, to want to serve, to do the right thing, to provide something of value, where that comes from from the heart is necessary but not sufficient. What, I, what that prompted me to do, because my care was there, my love was there, is that I investigated. I tried to learn more about what this baseball thing was about and why the practice of writing the name of the baseball wasn't quite the right thing to do. But when there is privilege of power over, which is in the case of a parent over an eight-year-old boy, um, I privileged the authority of what I knew over his. And I did not ask him what this ball meant until after the fact. So I think we start out with a lot of students who have a lot of care and compassion, but the heart is not enough, and that is where we are value added. The educational system provides the means to investigate, to research, to get to know, to have the context of how it is that we can have our heart take us to where that brings value to community, because it's not guaranteed and it's not self-evident. Although without compassion, there's nothing we have to work with, yet starting with compassion, we have the world to work with but we have something that we need to do. And that is what I would like to share with you in reflecting on what it is I've learned over the past 25, 30 years. So if you would bear with me with something that's a bit on the abstract side, I hope that I can show you towards the end in applying it with some of the handouts that I have, the exercises that you can use, that while this is challenging, um, territory, it is something that we absolutely need. So I have entitled this uh, Service Learning, the Simplicity, Complexity, and Urgency of Transforming Service into Learning and Learning into Service. Um, this is an oft-used quote, service combined with learning adds value to each and transforms both. It's a wonderful statement. Trying to make it actually happen is 
is very challenging. As you know yourself from your experiences, there are so many parts to this, just from the ordinary logistics to the managing the dynamics of the groups within the classroom and between the class, class and the communities that they work with and the content as well as all the other affective stuff that typically most people are not trained to deal with. So I'll go a little bit faster here. And uh, this reflective practitioner is how I think of myself, that I'm primarily a practitioner and I have reflected over the years on what it is I've been doing. I'm borrowing from Donald Chern, who is known for his work on the reflective practitioner, arguing that teaching is like, in many ways, like an art form, an artistic form in which it is not a science like physics, but on the other hand, like an art form, we can reflect on the fluidity and the movement, uh, the beauty, if you will, the aesthetic of what it is that we're creating as we teach. So what I share is my mental map on what it is I've been doing in service learning for all these years. And I've taught many service learning courses, been involved with projects from startup to launching it into the hands of the institution so it's institutionalized. And I'm using Donald Chern's distinction between theory and action and espoused theory, where theory and action is a mental map that you might have that you might not be fully conscious of or systematically articulated, but it helps guide what it is that you do, whereas in espouse theory, which what I am doing now, is in a more intentional manner, gathering together my thoughts and reflections about what I have been doing and activating theory in action, but now sharing with you my espoused theory of what it is the service learning is about. And I'm borrowing from Chris Argerus and Donald Chern's work on uh, theory in action. And I'm reframing here service learning. Starting out with this photo of where I was born. This is um, a photo of the northern area of the Philippines in the Bontoc Mountain province. The Philippines is 7,600 islands stretching 3,000 miles north to south, and this is the northernmost area of the Philippines where I was born. And these rice terraces were carved by hand and stone implements by Ifugaos, who are indigenous peoples of the Philippines. And they are rice steps where um, rice and other crops are cultivated. And here's an Ifugao who's planting. I think it's really beautiful. And when it was about to be um, flooded out in an effort to build a powerhouse dam, many people gathered to support the Ifugaos who have lost ancestral lands. And soil scientists said that they have perfected over many decades, hundreds of years, one of the most perfect forms of sustainable agriculture. So this is, of course, something that we're very interested in, but this is not based on what we call scholarship. It's based on ways of knowing that they have, um, that is part of their life. And um, it's not coded, however, in academic scholarship, but passed on through the actual practice of planting in this fashion. 